We've covered congressional races, but what about the presidential election? Have the debates helped or hurt at this point? And the state races for the Senate and House. Do the presidential candidates help or hurt those candidates? Nancy DiNardo and J.R. Romano weigh in on those issues. J.R., what do you think about that? Do you think that the debates that we saw, the vice presidential debates, the presidential debates, help or hurt uh, some of the state candidates? So, you know, I think the, the first presidential debate, obviously, I, I think um, most would would agree that it that neither candidate uh, really demonstrated anything to, to benefit the American people. Um, but I think the vice presidential debate, I think Mike Pence laid out the case of why uh, reelecting this president will be better for the average American, um, particularly when you're talking about Kamala Harris raising taxes. Uh, and, and, and that's really what I, I think here in Connecticut, to me, the National Democratic Party wants to do what the, to the country what the Democrats have done to this state. Now, now, Nancy can talk about how great things are, but the truth is they've raised taxes every year or every ele- uh, legislative session since 2011, 2013, 2015, uh, 2017, because Republicans had more numbers, was the only time in the last decade that, that tax increase didn't occur. And so Connecticut is at the bottom of every economic measure. So why would anyone want that for the national level? And, and this is it, what amazes me is you see, for those that are watching this need to understand, we have a public financing in this state. And when you're taking the public financing, you're not supposed to mention federal uh, candidates. You're not supposed to mention federal issues. And the Democrats are willfully violating that rule on a regular basis. So I'm curious if, if Chairman DiNardo would, would join me in telling her Democrats to start following CEP rules, whether it's paying for texting, digital advertising, because they are, they, honestly, they are just, they don't care what the laws are of this state when it, when it regards to the public financing. You've mentioned that a couple of times. So Nancy DiNardo, can you please respond to some of JR's? I would, uh, I have no problem with talking to you about that, JR, but I would hope that we can also talk about the bad behavior that has been going on on both sides, but I would have to say more on the Republican side of uh, people running uh, making sexist comments, making anti-Semitic comments, and what we saw in two towns where the Democrats and Republicans came together to uh, discredit and talk about the fact that they shouldn't have, the behaviors and the uh, aggression and the destruction shouldn't be happening, and I think we should be doing that too. So it's not just one thing, it's you know a lot of things, particularly uh, the bad behaviors, which quite honestly concern me. Sounds like they're well, well with all with all due respect, with all due respect, Madam Chair, I, I, I'm specifically talking about election law. I will absolutely stand side by side with you and condemn sexist, racist, uh, anti-Semitic comments. Um, and I and and I would agree that we're talking about people that are not elected officials. I am specifically talking about your candidates who are violating state election law willfully. Uh, who are using the CEP grant. So I'm asking you, would, would you be willing now to condemn that use of funds and tell them to stop using federal, using state money to, uh, uh, to try to win elections? This is exactly what, and I think you were the chairwoman when Dan Malloy got in trouble and got fined $350,000 for doing something very similar. Right, and obviously, uh, Mr. Chairman, that there are those laws, and if there's a violation, I'm assuming that your people would be taking it up with uh, SEEK, but um, I'm not aware of those, so before I start committing to it, I would like to see them. Let's change the direction here. J.R., I wanted you to respond to something you had said earlier, uh, and that is you know, how the president weighs in on certain races. I had a conversation with Senator Paul Formica. You know, he's up for re-election. That is the 20th district. And he said it's a slippery slope. He's had voters come up to him and say, if you support Donald Trump, I will not vote for you. And he's heard the opposite. So it definitely has a factor in many of these races. And in fact, some say Senator Formica could be in trouble. Yeah, that, that's not a new phenomenon. Uh, for those that, that, you know, that if you go back to 2004 and you go back to, you know, George Bush's reelect, there was a lot of controversy over the war. Um, and so there's no question that, and I will point out, most of the communities that are extremely wealthy, you're seeing that occur. You know, the line that I always use is people that can afford to be offended by Trump are holding this litmus test. But when you go into, and even when you look at the registration numbers, you can see Republicans, 
uh, gained registration in communities like New London and Bridgeport, and Democrats gained uh, per, uh, Republican registration in you know the one percent communities, the the ones that they often attack, uh, like Darien and Greenwich. And so you're seeing this little bit of a shift where the Republican Party is starting to fight for the middle class. Uh, more unions are engaged with us. And so it is. It's a slippery slope. I, I think Paul Formica is a, is a tremendous candidate. And I, and, I, and I know that he's reminding his constituents that more Democrats mean raising taxes and making Connecticut less affordable. Nancy Gennardo, we were going into break, but I'd like you to end the segment of why you think that Connecticut uh, will see more Democrats win uh, in this November's election? Well, I, I see it because, again, I go back to the fact that, you know, Trump has not been uh, very forthcoming in anything. He continually lies. He doesn't care about the American people. Right now, all he's worried about is campaigning. And in uh, response to uh, JR's comments about Mike Pence, Mike Pence was lying throughout the debate. And he also uh, talked over... Kamala Harris and uh, the moderator, which is a typical sexist thing. And I think that's why we're seeing more and more women become involved on both sides because they're tired of the sexism that has been going on. Quickly, before we go, any election night uh, gatherings? I know COVID has kind of put the kibosh on that. Are you guys having any events on the election night? Uh, we are not. Good. Well, no, we are not. Uh, normally on election night, I actually, uh, I'll send a, an email out to the press to say where I'm going to be. But um, I don't know that I'm even going to do that this year. Um, so I, I, I'm unaware of any election night parties. Nancy? To, to be quite honest, we haven't uh, really discussed it. Um, I know that, you know, there's some talk having, you know, maybe something outside where you can do it. But uh, we haven't really talked about that yet. We want to thank you for joining us on Face the State. We had a good, lively yeah. debate, and uh, we hope to see you back or at least uh, a wrap-up after the November election. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. State regulators first approved higher delivery charges for electricity, but now that's on hold. But some customers say they're still paying those high rates. Some answers when we come back.